So I work from home. So I teach storytelling for my job as well. That's what the Yes, Yes, Master is my business. And I teach people how to tell stories, you know, people who run businesses or people who are doing talks um, and organizations as well. If you work at a company or a school or something and you want me to come help you with stories, I will. Anyway, so I work from home. I have an office in my apartment, but I get super stir crazy. And so I go to the local coffee shop all of the time. It's like home from home. I'm usually there about once a day. And a few months ago, I was sitting there and this guy came in and sat down and he kind of looked like surfer has moved to the city, um, but like roughly my age and was so handsome, but handsome in this very particular kind of way where he looked like he would like for two minutes put all of his attention on me and then just like ignore me for the next four weeks. Um, and my brain who's had 10 years of therapy was like, Marsha, no. <laughs> And my vagina, <laughs> well, as Aaron Rodgers is on later coined the term, my vagina brain, my vagina brain is like, yes. <laughs> so I'm kind of busy having this fight between my brain and my vagina brain. Um, <laughs> and he's like on the other table, he hasn't noticed me. And then this girl walks in and I've seen her in there before because she's a total babe and like interesting babe. She's like got this side shave and then long hair and she's like, got, like always wears really tight clothes and is like spilling out of them in this way that's super hot. And as a queer person, I find it confusing sometimes with ladies like her because I'm like, I think I really want to make out with you, but maybe I just super want to look like you. And it's hard between the two. Anyway, and so she comes in and she walks straight over to him and she bends down and they kiss. And I'm like, oh my God, they're together. And then she goes and gets her coffee and sits down and they're like knee to knee and like, you know, looking in each other's eyes and, and, I, and I have some feelings. And <laughs> the first set of feelings is like, oh man, like, neither of these two people are single. And they're both people that I think are hot. And so I guess neither, you know, that's not gonna be my new boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, but, but, oh, but that's a small feeling at the beginning. But overwhelmingly, my feeling is like, yes! Because I really love love. Like I'm so, you know when people are like, oh, get a room. Like in my head, I'm like, yes, you're doing it. <laughs> you guys are going for it. Like even if I'm fresh out of a breakup, some people are like, oh, I'm fresh out of a breakup. Don't show me couples. And I'm like, you guys made it work. You're giving me hope. <laughs> and so here are these two people who are both super hot and they're together. And I'm like, yes, you're both hot and you're together. And this is great. And you like, so then over the next kind of month or two, I would be in the coffee shop and they would come in and, and I would try really hard to listen to their conversations. Um, I never quite managed to. I do a lot of drawing in coffee shops and I've realized drawing is an excellent way to like look like you're very involved in something but actually just be entirely listening to the conversations next to you. And um, <coughs> excuse me, so I tried to do that and, and like something that I suddenly remembered halfway through this, that the similarity is that my favorite movie of all time, like I could literally quote you the entire script from beginning to end, is um, Desperately Seeking Susan, starring Madonna. Um, and I'm assuming most of you haven't, has anyone seen it? Okay, so for those of you who haven't seen it, which is most of you, the, the central premise is Roberta, who's played by Rosanna Arquette, is a bored housewife from Fort Lee, New Jersey, but through the personal ads, which if you are under a certain age, personal ads are like how strangers used to get in touch with each other before the internet. <laughs> Or, in the case of Madonna's character, how you get in touch with your sweetheart if neither of you has a fixed address because uh, there were no cell phones. So through the personal ads, she becomes obsessed with Susan, Madonna, basically playing herself, so brilliant. Uh, Susan and her boyfriend, Jimmy. And then she like follows, she like reads them, like how they follow each other around the country and she goes and tries to, to you know, have a look at them. And I was like, oh my God, I'm totally having a desperately seeking Susan moment. I'm obsessed with this couple who I don't know. Um, so anyway, after about a month or two, I'm sitting in the coffee shop one day and, um, and he's in there with a bunch of his like bro friends and she comes in um, but she doesn't go over to him. She just goes over to the coffee line and he just hasn't even looked up. And then eventually she's kind of standing there and I see her glance over and then she kind of goes over to him and, and goes like, nudges him on the arm and goes, hey. And he's like, hey, and doesn't even look at her. They broke up. But also that was so cold. <laughs> And so then I'm like, okay, well, is that cold? Because he's a terrible person. Or did she like super break his heart? And now it's too painful for him even to look at her. And so I become even more obsessed with both of them. <laughs> but the thing is, 
I'm in this coffee shop all the time and it's small enough that you start to get to know the regulars. And he and I, often in there, we're often the only two um, customers in there. And he has never once made eye contact with me or said hello or anything like that. Whereas she, I will bump into her on the street and she'll be like, hey, how's it going? So obviously I'm like fully team side shape. <laughs> and the other day, I was sitting on a table with her and she was there and he came in and she went, hey, how's it going? And he was like, oh, how's it going? But didn't really look at her and I was like, oh, he's such a dick. <laughs> so now whenever I see him, there's like, it's really hard for me not to like, just walk up to his ear and be like, team side shave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so terrified that one of them is in the room right now. <laughs> Check the headlines tomorrow. Restraining order given to storytelling show host. <laughs> <laughs>